but that's class of 2010, I want you to pay attention on this because that's not what happened. Instead, this community was honest with itself about where you were falling short. You resolved to do better, push your kids harder, open their minds wider. Expose them to all kinds of ideas and people and experiences. So, graduates, I hope you'll continue those efforts. Don't make excuses. And I hope that wherever you go, you won't narrow the broad intellectual. And social exposure you've had here at Kalamazoo Central instead, seek to expand it. Don't just hang out with people who look like you. Or go to the same church you do, or share your political views. Broaden your circle to include people with different backgrounds and life experiences. Because that's how you'll end up learning what it's like to walk in somebody else's shoes. That's how you'll come to understand the challenges other people face. And this is not just an academic exercise. It's a way to broaden your ambit of concern and learn to see yourselves in each other. Which brings me to my final piece of advice for today. And that's to give back, to be part of something bigger than yourselves. Hitch your wagon to something that is bigger than yourselves. I know that so many of you have already served your community through efforts. Like your stuff the bus food drives and groups like activists for action. And I commend you for that. But I also know that many of you are the first in your family to go to college.
and right about now, you may be feeling all the weight of their hopes and expectations coming down on your shoulders. And once you start juggling those classes and activities and that campus job, and you get caught up in your own dreams and your own anxieties and dating you. may feel like you've got enough on your plate just dealing with your own life. It might be easier to turn the channel when the news disturbs you, to avert your eyes when you pass that homeless man on the street. To tell yourself that other people's problems really aren't your responsibility. But just think about what the consequence of that approach to life. would have been if that's how folks had acted here in this community. What if those Kalamazoo promised donors had said to themselves? Well, you know what? I can pay for my own kid's education. Why should I have to pay for somebody else's? Think about the consequences for our country. What if our founding fathers had said, you know, colonialism is kind of oppressive, but I'm doing okay. My family's doing alright, why should I spend my summer in Philadelphia arguing about a constitution? What if those abolitionists, those civil rights workers had said, you know, slavery is wrong. Segregation is wrong, but it's kind of dangerous to get mixed up in that stuff. I don't have time for all those meetings and marches. I think I'm going to take a pass. I hope it works out. But that's not something I want to do. I want you to think for a minute about the extraordinary men and women who've worn our
countries uniform and have given their last full measure of devotion to keep us safe and free. What if they said what if they said, I really do love this country. But why should I sacrifice so much for people I've never even met? Young men and women in uniform right now making those sacrifices. So you and I are here today because those people made a different choice. They chose to step up. They chose to serve. And I hope you will follow their example. Because there is work to be done, and your country needs you. We've got an economy to rebuild. We've got. Children to educate. We've got diseases to cure. We've got threats to face. We've got an oil. Spill to clean up. We've got clean energy to discover. And it is going to be up to you to meet all. Of those challenges to build industries and make discoveries and inspire the next generation. It's going to be up to you to heal the divide that continues to afflict our world. Now, I'm not saying you got to do it here all at once. But as Theodore Roosevelt once put it, I'm asking you to do what you can, with what you've got, where you are. And I can guarantee that wherever your journey takes you, there are going to be children who need. Mentors and senior citizens who need assistance, folks down on their luck who could use a helping hand. And once you've reached out and formed those connections. You'll find it's a little harder to numb yourself to other people's suffering. It's a little harder to ignore the national debates about the issues that affect their lives and yours. In the end, 
service binds us to each other and to our communities and our country in a way that nothing else can. It's how we become more fully American. That's the reason those donors created the Kalamazoo promise in the first place not for recognition or reward. but because of their connection to this community, because their belief in your potential. Because their faith that you would use this gift not just to enrich your own lives, but the lives of others and the life of the nation. And I'm told that soon after the promise was established. A first grader approached the superintendent at the time and declared to her, I'm going to college. First grader. I'm going to college. I don't know what it is, but I'm going. We may never know those donors' names, but we know how they helped bring this community together and how. You've embraced their promise not just as a gift to be appreciated, but a responsibility to be fulfilled. We know how they have helped inspire an entire generation of young. people here in Kalamazoo to imagine a different future for themselves. And graduates, today, I'm asking you to pay them back by seeking to have the same kind of impact with your own lives. by pursuing excellence in everything you do, by serving this country that you love. I know that you can do it. After all, you are the giants and with the education you've gotten here, there's nothing you can't do. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. And God bless the class of 2010.
Barack Obama. Hurricane Katrina 10 year anniversary address. Delivered August 27, 2015, Andrew Sanchez Community Center, New Orleans, Louisiana. Everybody, have a seat. Hello, everybody. Where why at? It is good to be back in the Big Easy. And this is the weather in August all the time, right? As soon as I land in New Orleans, the first thing I do is get hungry. When I was here with the family a few years ago, I had a shrimp po'boy at Parkway Bakery and Tavern. I still remember it that's how good it was. And one day, after I leave office, maybe I'll finally hear rebirth at the Maple Leaf on Tuesday night. I'll get a chance to see the Mardi Gras, and somebody will tell me what's carnival for. But right now, I just go to meetings. I want to thank Michelle for the introduction and, more importantly, for the great work she's doing. What she symbolizes, and what she represents in terms of the city bouncing back. I want to acknowledge a great friend and somebody who has been working tirelessly on behalf of the city. And he's following a family legacy of service your mayor, Mitch Landrew. Proud of him. And his beautiful wife. Cheryl. Senator Bill Cassidy is here. Where did Senator Cassidy go? There he is. Congressman Cedric. Richmond. Where's the congressman? There he is over there. We've got a lifelong champion of Louisiana in your former senator.
Mary Landrew in the house. Mary. I want to acknowledge a great supporter to the efforts to recover and rebuild. Congressman Hakeem Jeffries from New York, who has traveled down here with us. To all the elected officials from Louisiana and Mississippi who are here today. Thank you so much for your reception. I'm here to talk about a specific recovery. But before I begin to talk just about New Orleans, I want to talk about America's recovery. Take a little moment of presidential privilege to talk about what's been happening in our economy. This morning, we learned that our economy grew at a stronger end. More robust clip back in the spring than anybody knew at the time. The data always lags. We already knew that over the past five and a half years, our businesses have created 13 million new jobs. These new numbers that came out, showing that the economy was growing at a 3.7% clip. Means that the United States of America remains an anchor of global strength. and stability in the world that we have recovered faster, more steadily. Stronger than just about any economy after the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. And it's important for us to remember that strength. It's been a volatile few weeks around the world. And there's been a lot of reports in the news. and the stock market swinging, and worries about China and about Europe. But the United States of America, for all the challenges that we still have, Continue to have the best cards. We just got to play them right. <laughs>